Now on Nightside, devastating news for a Freeman family. The body of the man who went missing on Lake Roosevelt last Friday has been found. But we know about the events that led to his death and the message from his family. I'm tracking more winter weather in the first alert forecast, but I'll also let you know when you can enjoy a little more sunshine this weekend. Plus, what led to a police chase that ended near Hamilton and Trent this afternoon and how a woman ended up with life-threatening injuries. You're watching 4 News Now, Nightside. We begin with breaking new information since we were last on air. Thanks for staying up with us. I'm Derek Dice. A Spokane Valley man has been found dead on the Olympic Peninsula by a man walking his dog. 33-year-old Jarrett Wilson Jr. was found on a piece of property off of Highway 112 west of Port Angeles. There were no signs of trauma on his body and no suspicion of foul play, but Wilson had no shoes or socks on when he was found. The Clallam County Sheriff's Office is still investigating investigating his death, his next of kin in Texas have been contacted. A Freeman family is also facing devastating news. The body of the missing fisherman, 51-year-old Eric Jensen, has been found. Investigators say it was recovered from Lake Roosevelt this afternoon. He had disappeared on the lake last Friday. Now, there are still many unanswered questions surrounding his disappearance, but here's what we do know. Jensen launched his boat from the Bradbury Boat Launch near Kettle Falls last Friday at 9.30 a.m. This next orange dot is the last possible SOS pin drop from Jensen which was around 1 p.m. last Friday. Then, early Saturday morning at 3 a.m., the Stevens County Sheriff's Office finds his boat empty downstream. Jensen was well known in the Freeman community. He sat down with us in 2018 after his daughter was hurt in the Freeman school shooting, sharing his gratitude for the emergency crews who treated his daughter. Jensen was known to be a devoted father to his three girls. His brother, Anthony, shared this statement with us today, saying the family is, quote, spending time together in prayer, shedding tears as they come, and sharing stories and memories. He goes on to say the Freeman community, our church communities, and our friends have blanketed us in prayer and support as we navigate these tough days. Well, the end of this police chase that you can see in this 4 News Now exclusive video blocked off Hamilton Street just north of Trent for a few hours this afternoon. A Marissa Rio just happened to be there to catch it all on camera. The Spokane Police Department says this all stemmed from an altercation over stolen property. SPD says a man called police just after 1 p.m. saying he confronted a group of people on Market Street about stolen property. There was an altercation and the group of people took off in a car. The man decided to follow them, and then someone in that group fired shots at him. That's when this chase began. After pinning the car, officers pulled out three men and one woman. Uh, during the course of removing the subjects from the car, it was determined that a female passenger had a serious head wound, possibly shot. We have not determined that yet as to where it happened. Uh, and she was uh, tended to by law enforcement for medical care until medics arrived, and she was taken to the hospital, and she has life-threatening injuries. Now, at this time, police say there are no other known injuries. This is an ongoing investigation, though. We'll continue to update you with any new information as it becomes available. Well, after nearly three inches of snow yesterday, it was sure nice to see the <laughs> sun today. Chris Crocker joins us now to look at that first alert forecast, and it looks like we might see some more sun tomorrow. Uh, yes, especially the first part of the day. Today, it was start to finish, blue skies and sunshine. What a remarkable Friday. Not a cloud in the sky here in downtown. Of course, those clear skies then lead to a cold night. Here's a look at our current temperatures around the region. Already down in the teens in Spirit Lake and Cheney, we're in the 20s elsewhere around the region. Take a broader view of eastern Washington and north Idaho. We're at 17 in Winthrop, still 30 in Lewiston, but below freezing across the entire region. That means wet roads have already frozen solid. There are a lot of icy spots waiting for you as you leave the door tomorrow morning. And these are the numbers that will greet you down in the teens in Spokane, Coeur d'Alene, St. Mary's, 17 in Sandpoint tomorrow morning, and 16 in Bonner. Ferry, but it's going to be a sunny start to the day. We'll start to see some clouds moving in in the late afternoon and early evening, but it'll be partly cloudy. We're not looking at overcast conditions. A high temperature of 38, a little below average. 40 is our average high now, but those clouds. They are bringing some wet weather for Saturday night and Sunday, including some snow. I'll let you know what to expect in just a few minutes, Derek. 
All right, Chris, thank you. It is Black History Month, and one organization has been shaping black history here in Spokane for more than 100 years. The Spokane NAACP is the oldest civil rights organization in the city and continues to fight for equity and racial justice every day. Recently, Lisa Gardner was named the chapter's new president. She has deep roots in Spokane. Gardner hopes to unite with other communities in the fight against racism and injustice and open the door to different perspectives. Are brought into different conversations, um, not just from a political standpoint, not just from a community standpoint, but also from a moral standpoint. Gardner also works with the city council, where she's focused on building up her childhood neighborhood, East Central Spokane, as a cultural center for the black community. We don't have a cultural center here or a cultural hub, and I think that with the right uh, financial investments, um, East Central could be that. Our Sydney Charles sat down with Gardner to hear about her family's past and how it's inspiring her future as the NAACP president. You can watch her full report right now on KXLY.com. Well, it is the Year of the Dragon, and the Spokane Chinese Association is inviting you to join in on the celebrations. This Sunday, the Fox Theater will host the festivities featuring face painting, calligraphy, and traditional dancing. Sunday celebrations will kick off at 1 o'clock, and the event will be free until 4. After that, you can buy a ticket to the show, which will include traditional Chinese music and martial arts. Plenty of activities for everyone in the family to enjoy. And oh, don't forget the free food. <laughs> we will have amazing, we'll have a lot of yummy um, Lunar New Year, Chinese Lunar New Year goodies to give away. But Spokane's Lunar New Year celebrations don't end there. Next Saturday, Spokane's United We Stand will host a Lunar New Year celebration featuring our very own Peter Choi, who you see right there as the MC. Well, new on Nightside, Seattle police are investigating a hate crime after a woman's hijab was stolen at Knife Point. It happened this week while she was working near the University of Washington, and now Muslim students are highly concerned. Connor Board has the latest in this investigation. Many University of Washington students are on high alert. I was very scared and I spoke to a few of my friends who were very scared. This is because of a hate crime being investigated in the university district. A notification sent out by UW police said a woman who was not a student was held at knife point and had her hijab stolen. You're just ripping off part of our identity and then you're assaulting us. And yes, I agree with the fact that it is a sexual assault because we, because you're making us uncover a part of our bodies that we choose not to uncover. This student, who is a part of the Muslim Students Association, says by wearing a hijab, women can sometimes become targets of Islamophobia. Can I continue to show my identity the way that I want to, or is it, am I literally risking my life doing this? She's definitely shaken up by it. I spoke to her briefly yesterday. Imran Siddiqui is the executive director of the advocacy group Care Washington. He says the victim told him the crime happened when she was filling a soap dispenser at work. But she said, he's like, give me this, this bull basically uh, you know when she's he's pulling the the headscarf off of her head and the police notification said one man is the primary suspect and a second man may have been involved the woman told Siddiqui the suspect was saying things about Islam and Israel despite her being Iraqi so when there is a rise in this type of sensationalism and and Islamophobia in the global uh, conversation, then you see that manifesting itself on a, on a street level. As Siddiqui and his group support the victim, people in the Muslim community hope for change and acceptance. I think then when the narrative starts changing, that we will see people, this like hopefully see this Islamophobia um, kind of subside a little bit. No, thankfully, the woman was not physically injured. Seattle police continue their search for the suspects involved. Well, Governor Jay Inslee calling out Republicans in Washington, D.C., including Kathy McMorris Rogers, will explain what for. Also in Olympia, some lawmakers want to make it a crime to create nude images of minors using artificial intelligence. Why some say the bill is too harsh. Pick of the night tonight, a crystal clear sky over the Pondere River. This is from Brandy Crosswhite's backyard. Not a bad uh, backyard view there. Uh, enjoying the very last little bit of light this evening. Thank you, Brandy, for a fantastic photo. I'll be back with your seven day forecast. Download the KXLY Plus app on your connected TV. Ford News Now is brought to you by End the Violence.
This is Ford Truck Month with amazing offers across an amazing lineup of Ford trucks. Get to Ford Truck Month. Lock in a six-year rate. Get 1.9% for 72 on a 2023 F-150 only at your local Ford dealer. It's a great time to improve your sleep and pay less during the President's Day mattress event at Walker's. Enjoy the best selection of all your favorite mattress brands. And with select eye comfort or Beautyrest Black Hybrid mattress purchases, you'll get up to $300 of free furniture plus a $100 prepaid MasterCard, as well as five years no interest financing. Making it the perfect time to improve your sleep for less. This week at all Walker's Furniture Locations. It's time to leap into savings this February at both Cal Superstores in Airway Heights and Coeur d'Alene as Cal Cars is offering a super deal where you can bring your tax return in and Cal will help match it up to $2,000. Plus, when you come in and take a test drive, you'll qualify to win $250,000 on February 29th. It's the perfect chance to get a new set of wheels for less with a $2,000 tax match this week at Cal. I'm Mark Peterson, the Extreme Team and Horizon Credit Union, ready to take on our next job. If you know of a project that needs an Extreme Team makeover, go to kxoy.com to nominate it. Our thanks to Horizon Credit Union for sponsoring the 4 News Now Extreme Team. It's that time of year to book your roofing project now before the spring rush hits at McVeigh Brothers Roofing, Siding, and Windows. And when you purchase a new certainty roof today, you'll get a five-star lifetime material and labor warranty upgrade for free. This is Ford Truck Month with amazing offers across an amazing lineup of Ford trucks. Get to Ford Truck Month. Lock in a six-year rate. Get 1.9% for 72 on a 2023 F-150 only at your local Ford dealer. The 4 News Now First Alert Weather app. Download or update it today. Hi, right, welcome back. We all got a little bit of vitamin D today thanks to the sun making an appearance. And if you want to get outside this weekend, Chris, tomorrow is a better bet than Sunday, right? Oh, yes, absolutely. And the earlier in the day, your odds are better to uh, get some of that sunshine. Here are four things to know about your forecast. Of course, if you do go out early in the morning, it is going to be cold. It's cold and clear tonight with overnight lows getting down in the teens throughout the entire region. It is going to be icy for a while because everything is freezing solid out there right now and it's going to take a little bit before the sun gets high enough to start melting it but we should make some more progress mostly sunny on Saturday with that increase in clouds late in the day and then rain and snow for Sunday and we may have some minor accumulations of wet snow on some of the grassy surfaces and maybe even on the streets and sidewalks but it won't be around for long because we are going to start warming up heading into the work week and the third day of our three day weekend forecast radar starting off at nine o'clock tomorrow morning with clear skies across the region beautiful start to the day worth getting up a little bit earlier for uh, then we start to see those clouds filtering our sunshine until about 10 o'clock tomorrow night then we are really in the starting to get into the overcast in Spokane and Coeur d'Alene and starting to see that wet weather coming up from the the south approaching the Palouse, but in the form of rain initially, and then here it is, 2 a.m., more of a rain-snow mix or just plain old snow around Spokane and Coeur d'Alene by 2 a.m. Snow in the mountains should be fresh snow for skiers on Sunday morning, and it's going to continue through the day. Here's 8 o'clock on Sunday morning with more uh, rain snow mix or snow in Spokane and Coeur d'Alene. Then it will start turning over all to rain by the time we get into the late afternoon. Finally, by 8 o'clock Sunday, we are going to dry out and get a little bit of a break. Here's a look at our snow level over the next several days. Tomorrow at 2200 feet, but then it drops to 1500 feet overnight. So no problem uh, seeing snow that is below the lowest points of Spokane. 3000 feet on Sunday and Sunday night. Uh, so plenty of opportunity for snow in the mountains and then a rain snow mix down in Spokane. By five, uh, by Monday, we're up around 5,000 feet, but our, also our chance of precipitation begins to decrease fairly dramatically by then. So, beautiful Saturday. 
kind of indoorsy on Sunday, unless you are heading to the mountains, that you're going to get some fresh snow as you play. President's Day, we do have a chance of some rain and a high temperature of 43. We stay in the 40s right on through the end of next week with overnight lows, though, down below freezing. We're going to be doing a lot of freezing and thawing and probably no sign of our snow by the end of next week. Maybe just those big clumps in the parking lot that <laughs> they get plowed and yes, pushed into the corners exactly all right chris thank you well people who live in spokane county rejected every school bond in this week's special election including the one for spokane public schools we asked people why they voted no and their responses were varied but the common theme was inflation and skyrocketing property taxes. Richard Klein is recently retired after working more than 30 years at the VA hospital. He's on a fixed income and doesn't think he can afford to pay anymore. Over the last five years, my taxes have almost doubled. You know, just the fact that this house costs more now based on property taxes, and it just we're just getting outpriced here. And to think that they're gonna put another bond on a levy that's already in place, we can't afford it. Klein says he supports education for students, but it's really difficult to deal with higher property taxes. He says he'd like the district to come up with an alternative options to replacing schools. Spokane Public Schools wants to reach out to the community. The school board has a meeting scheduled for Wednesday to discuss possible options, including lowering costs for the bond. Washington Governor Jay Inslee is now demanding lawmakers on Capitol Hill, including Eastern Washington Representative Kathleen Morris Rogers, pass a bill to provide additional aid to Ukraine. Take a listen. There is a city in Ukraine right now. It's becoming surrounded by Russian troops, and they simply don't have the artillery shells. And the reason they don't is because the Republican Party won't stand up for democracy and give the Ukrainian people a chance to defend themselves. It's unacceptable. Governor Inslee goes on to say it's unacceptable that Republicans get to go out on vacation for two weeks without providing any additional support. Lawmakers in Olympia want to make it a crime for anyone to create or possess nude images of a minor created using artificial intelligence. These photos are known as deep fakes. We never thought about AI generator revenge porn. It's amazing what people can do with computers these days and take a perfectly legitimate and entirely clothed image and make it appear to be something totally different. During a public hearing on the bill, many were in support of it, saying it holds whoever makes the sexually explicit content accountable. But critics say the current version of the bill may be too harsh. Should an individual is convicted of possession of a fabricated depiction, where no child was harmed during the creation of the depiction, be given the same punishment as an individual who is convicted of a possession of a depiction where a child was sexually abused during the creation of the depiction. If the bill is approved, anyone convicted of creating or having these types of images would face the same penalties as someone convicted of having real child pornography. The bill was already approved in the House, but it still needs to make it through the Senate before going to Governor Inslee's desk. Some schools in North Carolina are using artificial intelligence to help students deal with mental health issues. Meet Kiwi the Llama. It's an AI chatbot developed by mental health professionals that provides around-the-clock support. Students can log on and have private chats with Kiwi about things that are troubling them. Parental involvement and, and permission to use the app are required. The app is designed to help students in grades 6 through 12. Well, how pesticides are worming their way into the most important meal of the day. That's next on Nightside. Later tonight on Nightline, Prince Harry speaking out for the first time since his father's cancer diagnosis. What he hopes it will inspire in his family. Plus, cult classic Little Shop of Horrors. One-on-one -on -one with the stars Evan Rachel Wood and Darren Chris. Live stream KXLY Plus on the 4 News Now app. It's the Great Rate Reduction Sale this week at Dishman Dodge Ram Chrysler Jeep. And that means we are rolling back the interest rate to our lowest level in years on our large selection of slightly used trucks, cars, and SUVs. Plus, with most vehicles sold, you'll get a three-month, 3,000-mile powertrain warranty. And with new shipments arriving daily, plus a 4.84 financing rate for 72 months, there's never been a better time to visit Dishman. 
It's time to leap into savings this February at both Cal Superstores in Airway Heights and Coeur d'Alene as Cal Cars is offering a super deal where you can bring your tax return in and Cal will help match it up to $2,000. Plus, when you come in and take a test drive, you'll qualify to win $250,000 on February 29th. It's the perfect chance to get a new set of wheels for less with a $2,000 tax match this week at Cal. Nothing adds more elegance or transforms a room better than the luxurious look of engineered hardwood or laminate flooring from the experts at Windsor Plywood. It's time to shop, shop for wood. If you're remodeling or redecorating, come check out our selection of moisture-resistant laminates with great discounts on all moldings so you can give your home, office, or cabin a new look in the new year. Windsor Plywood. With two locations in Spokane. Dear Winter, we're coming. Our squad of vehicles with all-wheel drive and four-wheel drive is ready to take you on. Safety's the name of our game. Bundle up. Toyota. Toyota has 22 all-wheel drive and four-wheel drive vehicles, more than any other brand. Find yours at Toyota.com. Toyota. Let's go places. For News Now is brought to you by Sate Bistro and Catering Company. Thanks for staying up with us here on Nightside. If you like to indulge in sweet treats but want to keep your health in mind, a new bakery in Deer Park lets you do both. Keto Sweetie offers sugar-free, gluten-free, and low-carb options. From cookies to donuts to cinnamon rolls, they have healthy options for a variety of treats. It started as a wholesale bakery in 2020, and today it opened its first physical location. There's no cross-contamination troubles. Um, we're a bakery that was it's kind of based on the keto lifestyle, which is a low-carb, low-sugar lifestyle. Uh, but a lot of folks out there with other health options, with diabetes, epilepsy. And the bakery is open from 2 to 6 every Thursday and Friday. A keto diet can be great for people who struggle with food allergies, and now there's even more help thanks to a new drug. Today, the FDA approved a medication that can help to lessen the severity of those allergic reactions. Here's how it works. Patients take an injection of Zolaire once every two to four weeks. Then, if they accidentally ingest something they're allergic to, the reaction is milder. Zolaire is not meant for the emergency treatment of allergic reactions. Breakfast. For some, it's the most important meal of the day, but a new study finds some of the most popular breakfast foods contain a certain pesticide. The pesticide is called Cormaquat. In the U.S., the chemical is known, or excuse me, is only allowed on ornamental plants, but the EPA allows it to be used on imported oats and other foods. Cormaquat itself as a chemical can be harmful if you're exposed to a large amount of it. In the study from the nonprofit Environmental Working Group, researchers found that 90% of the food items tested contained chlormaquat. That includes Quaker oats and Cheerios. Previous research on animals found the chemical can damage reproductive systems and disrupt fetal growth. It's important to note it's not yet known how chlormaquat may affect humans. Doctors say with its relatively small sample size, this study should not cause any panic. Well, two juveniles have been charged in the shooting that killed one person and hurt 22 others at the Kansas City Chiefs Super Bowl celebration. Authorities haven't said their age or what they're charged with yet. A 10-year-old boy was one of several children struck by gunfire. The bullet just barely missed his lungs. Samuel Ariano used what he learned in school, take cover, but he was still hit before he made it behind a trash can. I got no sleep last night because mm -hmm. the trauma. It could have been inches from my whole future. He says he was trampled in the chaos and there was such a rush to get out of there that his family didn't even realize he'd actually been shot. Samuel and his mom said they're thinking of the other victims of the shooting. Yesterday, the police chief said the shooting stemmed from a dispute between several people. Well, coming up in sports, Washington State is looking to end a 16-year NCAA tournament drought. We look at the Kooks' chances and Gonzaga's next. Don't go away. Live stream KXLY Plus on the 4 News Now app. 4 News Now is brought to you by Burke's Restoration. So the question is... Okay, here we go. Are you kidding me? What would you do? 
You just won't believe what people do when they think no one's watching. And this season, I brought Sarah Haynes and Kamal Bell along for the ride. All right, let's break it. Is John Theonis here? I was here all the time. The all-new season of What Would You Do premieres Sunday night on ABC. Spokane Tribe Resort and Casino brings you actor and comedian Tracy saying, Morgan doomsday, to Spokane I Live. I got like 8, Saturday, February 24th. Tickets are available online now at SpokaneTribeCasino.com. Entertainment without limits. This holiday weekend, the President's Sale is on at More Furniture, and it's your chance to save with storewide sale pricing and special interest-free financing. Take a full 60 months to pay with no down payment on the furniture you need, all on sale. Our newest 2024 arrivals are in stock and ready for delivery. And with 60 months interest-free financing, you can take it home today with no down payment. Visit morefurniture.com to preview sales specials. It's leap year at Finley Downtown Toyota. And that means we are rolling back some prices on our best-selling Toyota trucks and popular SUVs with some of the largest trade-in values we've ever offered. Plus, we are aggressively pricing down our large inventory of used vehicles and offering a three-month, 3,000-mile warranty with every vehicle sold. So if you're looking for a great deal on a new or used set of wheels, you can find it all this week at Finley. Spokane Tribe Resort and Casino brings you actor and comedian Tracy Morgan to prep. Spokane I Live. I got like 8, Saturday, February 24th. Tickets are available online now at SpokaneTribeCasino.com. Entertainment without limits. Well, the Pac-12 and Commissioner George Klyovkov have finally agreed to part ways. The move was expected since last summer when the Pac-12 dissolved after 10 of the schools left for other conferences. Klyovkov's last day will be February 29th. Now, the Pac-12 is expected to announce its plans for future leadership next week. Whoever takes over the job will have a tall order. Washington State and Oregon State are the only Pac-12 schools remaining. They'll operate as a two-team conference for the next two seasons in football under a scheduling alliance with the Mountain West. Men's and women's basketball and other sports will compete against the West Coast Conference next season. The first order of business for the new commissioner is to figure out the long-term plan for the conference and land a new media deal, something Klyovkov wasn't able to do. The search for a new TV deal was a lengthy and frustrating process that played a role in schools wanting to leave the PAC and join other conferences. We'll keep you updated on the pac 12 search for new leadership. Well, Selection Sunday is nearly a month away. Gonzaga and Washington State are still fighting for NCAA tournament bids. Julian Minnison and Alex Crescenti tell us the chances both the Zags and Cougs to make it to the big dance. Well, March is either going to be really busy or we might be booking some vacation because there's a good chance that both teams, Gonzaga and WCU, could be in, but there's also a chance that the Bulldogs and Cougs could miss out on the NCAA tournament. As of now, when you look at the resumes, Cougs have a better shot than the Zags do. Yeah, that's right. Both of these squads are playing some pretty good basketball as of late, but we might not know until actual selection Sunday whether the Cougs or the Zags or both squads are headed to the big dance. For Washington State, they are trying to end a six 16-year tournament drought. I was a sophomore in high school the last time that happened. And if they do, a huge reason for it is going to be the play of guard Miles Rice. Seems like he's a lock for Pac-12 Freshman of the Year as he's came up with clutch shot after clutch shot so many times this year. Now looking at the Cougs resume, they could have a tournament bid all but locked up in the next few weeks if they continue to win. With a 19-6 overall record, they sit at 35 in the net rankings and second in the conference standings with quality wins against Arizona, Boise State, Colorado, and Oregon, and they should be favored in all but one of their remaining regular season games, so plenty of opportunities to pick up some quality wins and leave no doubt headed into the Pac-12 tournament in Las Vegas in a few weeks. Gonzaga has less room for error. The Bulldogs are the last team in the NCAA tournament, according to ESPN, meaning out of all 68 teams that make the big dance, Gonzaga is number 68. The Bulldogs earned its biggest win of the season against Kentucky last week, and they didn't 
have a quad one win until that game. The Bulldogs have a higher net ranking than many of the tournament teams, at least for the projections at number 23 in the net. Gonzaga will have a chance for another quality win against St. Mary's to end the regular season on the road. The focus for the Bulldogs right now is to earn a top two seed in the WCC and get a bye to the semifinals of that conference tournament. That way, if Gonzaga needs to win the conference tournament to earn an automatic tournament bid, the path is a little easier. Now, another team that can't afford to keep slipping is the Washington State women's basketball team. Yeah, the Cougs are projected to make the tournament as of right now, but they've lost the last four in a row headed into tonight. WSU on the road against Arizona. Turnovers hurt the Cougs in this one. The bad pass leads to the steal and the easy bucket for Helena Pueyo. Wazoo fell behind by double digits early on and pretty much had to scrap and claw the rest of the way. Tara Wallach, she's played well. Here she is with the crafty move, the up and under with the left hand for the score. But the Cougars, they've struggled without their star player, Charlize Ledger Walker, who's out for the season with an ACL injury. Skylar Jones scores inside for the Wildcats, and that'll do it as Cami Etheridge, WCU's head coach, does not like what she sees. Washington State loses its fifth straight game and will likely drop in the tournament projections once again. And it should be a note that Gonzaga Women's Hoops was not in ESPN's top 16 team reveal for the NCAA tournament this week. The Bulldogs are a projected five seed. They have to get a top four if they want to host some games here in Spokane for the big dance. That'll do it for sports. Well, in the Idaho girls 5A state semifinals, Tegan Colvin poured in 33 points as Coeur d'Alene defeated top seeded Boise tonight, 58-55 down in Nampa. In the other semifinal, Lake City, the second seed, held off Rigby 56-53 behind 22 points from Sophia Zufelt. That means it'll be Lake City versus Coeur d'Alene for all the marbles tomorrow night. Live stream KXLY Plus on the 4 News Now app. At 4 News Now, we believe you should expect more from local news. Our team is committed to a community conversation and bringing you information you need when and where you need it. Numerica believes in and supports that mission. What have you got against tomatoes? I don't know how anybody can eat those things. It's the Great Rate Reduction Sale this week at Dishman Dodge Ram Chrysler Jeep. And that means we are rolling back the interest rate to our lowest level in years on our large selection of slightly used trucks, cars, and SUVs. Plus, with most vehicles sold, you'll get a three-month, 3,000-mile powertrain warranty. And with new shipments arriving daily, plus a 4.84 financing rate for 72 months, there's never been a better time to visit Dishman. At Rite Aid, we know your yoga routine is more than a workout. It's a ticket to cheat day. That your eye drops do more than soothe eyes. They keep you scrolling all night. And that your skincare is more than just me time. So from your bedtime routine to your wake-up rituals, it means more at Rite Aid. Get up to date on your flu and COVID-19 vaccinations so you don't miss a moment with the ones you love. Over 60, you may need your RSV vaccination too. Schedule ahead or just walk in. Toyota trains certified technicians. Is that important? Well, you wouldn't hire just anyone to help you move, would you? The shortcut saves two hours easy. Please, dude. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> of course not. Not again. Toyota Service Centers. Keep your Toyota a Toyota. See breaking news in your area or have a story idea? Contact 4 News Now. Well, grab your leather pants and get ready to empty a whole can of hairspray because Def Leppard is returning to the Inland Northwest. The rock and roll legends will be creating hysteria as they play at the Spokane Arena on September the 6th. Your tickets go on sale next Friday. Going to be uh, a lot of 80s rockers excited about them coming back to town. Yeah. I've been blasting them in my car 
all day after mm. hearing that announcement. Very nice. I love it. <laughs> all right. So we're expecting some sun tomorrow, but Sunday's a little more iffy. A very, very different day. Yes. Rain and snow on the way for Sunday. So enjoy some sunshine on Saturday. All right. That's going to do it for us here on Nightside. Hope you all have a wonderful weekend. We'll be back on Monday with more. For